Today we're going to explore the future of coding apps and websites with something called the OpenAI Codex JavaScript Sandbox. The way it works is you provide instructions over here on the left and press run and it adds code for your instructions over here on the right. Draw a small red button in the center of the screen. There we go, I even messed up what I said and it still figured it out. Button works. Draw a number known as the count at the top center of the screen, period. Increment this number each time the click me button is pressed, period. The counter starts at zero, period. There we go. Click. Okay, clicking does not increment the count. Let's try once more, see if we can salvage this. Clicking the red button in the center of the screen should increment the count at the top of the screen. There we go. Okay, so this is a very simple example of creating code using natural language. I'll leave the link to the JS Fiddle in the description below, by the way. And start a new project. Create a list of grocery items shown as bullet points on the left of the screen. Create a button in the top right with the text add to add. Pressing this button should open an input dialog for the user to enter text. This text is used to add a new item to the grocery list. Okay, it's not exactly in the top right of the screen like I had requested, but maybe this will actually add something to the list. It does, that's wonderful. Let's see if we can add a delete button. Maybe we can add one by each item. That would be nice, that would be ideal. Create a delete button to the left of each list item. Pressing this button will remove that item from the grocery list, period. Okay, not quite to the left, but maybe it will work. Oh my gosh, it works. That's amazing. I wonder if it can style all these things. Style the buttons and input fields to look more friendly, period. This means adding color and outline to each button according to the bootstrap style. See what it does with that. Oh wow. Yeah, everything looks quite a bit better. I've always wanted to make a zombie sort of shooter game in this, but it, I've had some difficulties in the past trying it. I'll give it a shot now. Draw a red square in the center of the screen, period. This square will be known as the player object. Let's do just a width of like 20 pixels, and I could have told it to make it 20 by 20 pixels, but I neglected to do that. Create a green square at a random location on the screen. Actually, let's adjust this to say once per second. Move each green square towards the red square at a rate of one pixel per second. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm just gonna copy this and adjust it slightly. See if we can get a different outcome move each green square towards the player known as the red square towards the player's position they're closing in on me okay let's adjust the rate a little bit you know i said one pixel per second but that's not quite fast enough i think 10 times as fast would be better there we go love it <laughs> that's fun. So I need to be able to move now. Move the red square with WASD. Oh, that's so cool. That's awesome. Wow, this is the furthest I've gotten. I would love to be able to move faster as well, but I'm gonna have a gun to shoot these zombies. That's just gonna happen. I mean, I could make traps or something, but it's so much more fun to shoot them. Before this crashes, let's try and... When the user clicks the screen, create a 
small yellow square known as a bullet at the player's location and move the bullet towards the position of the click location. Okay, I can create bullets, kind of. They are following me like zombies. <laughs> okay, let's, let's try that again. Oh boy. So once again, it does not, does not move towards the right location. Let's see if we can try again. Hmm. We got a swarm of bullets around me. Let's try again. Gotta get this. I guess I could just be laying mines. Just for brevity, I'm going to stop working on this. Even though I really want to make a zombie game. One day I'll succeed with this codex and making a zombie game. I wonder if we could make Minesweeper in this. Create a table of square buttons that covers the entire screen. Hmm. Interesting. Let's try describing it a different way. Create 500 buttons on the screen spaced evenly in columns and rows. Okay. Not too bad. Each button should be 20 pixels by 20 pixels and have blank text. That's quite a bit better. Very impressive. Enough square buttons to fill the screen. There we go. Now we've got our foundation. Okay, now Minesweeper is actually kind of a complex game because there's all sorts of like revealing and things like that. So, how are we gonna do this? Randomly pick 50 buttons and assign them to be bombs. Uh, mark them as bomb. <laughs> bombs should appear the same as regular blank buttons. Oh, I found a bomb symbol. Wow. Hmm. Indicate bombs with a bomb icon. Come on. You know what it is. It's a bomb icon. Where did my cool bomb symbol go? Randomly pick 50 buttons and assign them to be bombs as the button text. There we go. Mark each button with text indicating how many bombs are within a distance of one. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. Wow, albeit it covered up the bombs are within one distance of that button. Ooh, that looks pretty good. That looks very good. Wow, it did it. Well, kind of. Looks like it doesn't count vertical or diagonal. Okay, I can't really seem to get it to show the vertical indicators. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe that's okay. Color each button black, period. When the user clicks a button, comma, change the background color of that button to be gray, period. Okay, one step at a time, that's what it likes. Okay, I also need to change this bomb to be straight black. I think I may need to just change that bomb emoji to something else like a asterisk or something like that so that we can know it is a bomb yet still have it be functional. Let's see. Okay, this is better now. Wait, where? Oh, we found one. Nice. For each bomb, Comma, when that bomb is clicked, change the outline of that button to be red, period. There we go. I mean, it doesn't show all the way around. I think it's being covered up, but not too bad. So there we have it. Let me know if you like videos like this in the comments below. You want to see more projects generated using an AI. Personally, I find this intensely interesting because I would love to be able to code things uh, or create things without actually writing the code myself. I found that uh, I use, uh, there's an extension in VS Code for writing code automatically, completing in the context. I use it all the time, many, many times throughout the day. 
So AI is already starting to creep its way into my everyday routine and you know before I know it I'm sure that I'll just be using this something like this to generate projects and simply um, be the controller of the generation for now it definitely requires some technical expertise but I imagine that that will wane over time and it will become more and more automated. So thanks everyone for watching. Let me know once again if you want to see more videos like this in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.